Hey everyone, Mango Seven Roll here. How we doing today? Welcome to another episode of Epic Seven. Today we're gonna talk a little bit about the new PvP gear coming, kind of where you would want to use each piece, and maybe kind of an order in which to buy them in. Um, that said, you should kind of aim just as a broad sort of thing here. You should aim for all of them by the end of the season. Uh, as they are 88 gear, they have just such potential to roll well, even if some of them aren't the best. So I would definitely be buying every single one of these, but I guess the order of which kind of matters. So most important thing here is the passionate frame, obviously. Um, you, you never want to go without this frame. I'm obviously just kidding, but for people like me, that's definitely the most important thing. There's also the unknown slate, and this is used to um, memory imprint a five-star unit. So this is an absolute must-buy, but the thing is you don't really need to buy this until the end. Like, it's gonna help you the least, but it's something you can't miss. So, uh, it's kind of tough because we don't know when the end of the season is, but this is definitely something you want to pick up, but leave it until the end IMO. So let's take a look at the pieces one by one here and just kind of talk about them. So, the first off is the Gladiator's Axe. And this has, um three-ish that are pretty important stats. It has attack, speed, and crit chance. And one thing I want to mention is the base rolls on all of these are pretty atrocious, like pretty much min rolls for everything, but they can roll insanely high. Like the attack could roll 9%, for example, on here instead of 5%. So um, even with the base stats being so low, they can really, really, really turn out great. So something like this is really good for somebody who doesn't care as much about crit damage, I think. Uh, and maybe if you get a lot of attack, it's really good for somebody that wants to like focus on attack, maybe like a Sez or something like that. It also is always worth buying and upgraded pieces like this that are eye level 88 with a speed substat because you never know if this turns into like a 20 plus speed weapon, right? Like you never know and you just kind of have to upgrade it no matter what just for that. So a theme we'll see here is basically anything with a speed substat is probably going to be a little bit higher rated than anything else. Um, next up we have the chest here, and the chest uh, is pretty pretty atrocious, um, if I'm going to be honest here. Like, it's honestly terrible. There's no speed, which is really what you want to get on your chest. There's no crit damage as well. There are two defensive stats. There's no effectiveness. Um, it's just pretty altogether bad, and... I don't remember what all the pieces look like. I'm kind of doing this on the fly, but I have to imagine this is going to be basically last on my list. Like, I can't think of anything I would rather have um, that would be worse than this. So there's that. Uh, it doesn't help that it's an attack set either, because this would be really great as, like, almost any other set, I would say. And then we have the helm, and the helm bothers me because it's blue, but it is what it is. I guess some people like blue mohawks. So the substats on this are interesting. This is really good for somebody, maybe like an Araminta, somebody who really doesn't care too much about crit rate or crit damage, and um, really likes effectiveness and speed and attack, like those three main stats. Um, I find if a piece doesn't have like the two main crit rate, crit damages, it kind of loses a lot of value. And then if it doesn't have like HP percent or defense percent, just to kind of get some defensive stats in too, it kind of loses some value as well. Um, so overall, not a bad helm, and I think it has a lot of potential, but you could also just basically brick it with the effectiveness, uh, or effect resistance, sorry. It's not that it's a bad stat, don't get me wrong, it's that uh, for offensive units I would way rather have attack, crit damage, crit rate, those main three stats. Um, and again, it does have a speed set, so you could get lucky and get 20 plus speed for a substat and all of a sudden be amazing. And then we have the booties, and these booties are 65% attack with crit rate and crit damage as subs, so they're automatically going to be amazing just like that. There is no um, effectiveness, and there is no speed on these substats, but that's okay with crit rate, crit damage, and attack percent main. It's also got one defensive sub as well. Also, as a side note, I really wish these had like effectiveness instead of effect resistance on some of them at least, because effect resistance just kind of feels terrible especially on an attack set. Um, but overall, these are pretty fantastic boots. Most of the time, you're going to want speed over attack, but you cannot argue with the possibilities this could be. Like, you could be 30% uh, crit damage um, sub boots or 25% crit chance or something like that with 65% attack, and it's pretty hard to beat that. So definitely, um, these are one of my favorites to buy here. Next up, we have the neck, which I think is the best piece to buy. Um... So I would almost always rather have crit damage than crit rate for my neck, but 
with how many attack units we have, we're going to want as many as we can. Um, I personally have nowhere near enough crit damage next to use, so some of my people are going to have to use crit chance. And not only that, but this has three like pretty fantastic subs, health percent, speed, and crit damage as subs. I would love if it was attack in there too, but you can't get everything. Uh, and again, another thing to mention too is that this could be another 20 plus speed sub and on a neck, so you could use this as a broken set. And the other thing as well is um, a lot of people use dual crit set. Uh, instead, you could use this as a broken set if you really wanted to and get that 60% crit um, instead from this, which I think is more than an 85 crit set. And then you could use uh, another piece like a defense set or a resistance set um, that rolled really well that you don't want to make a set bonus from. So keep that in mind when you're getting this neck. Um, this is definitely the first piece I'm going to buy as I'm desperately in need of necks. Next up is the ring, and the ring is pretty freaking good. 65% um, attack is already bonkers, especially as an attack set. It's got two of the best subs. The only thing it's missing is defensive subs and um, speed, and you really can't have everything. The only way this really gets better outside of minimum rolls being better is if effect resistance is switched to speed, because it's hard to not use speed subs. Um, but 65% attack and the chance to roll just nutters is definitely, definitely worth it. Uh, so yeah, that's all the pieces right now. Um, I would definitely recommend to buy the neck first. I, I feel like that's just the way to go. Um, I would probably buy the ring second because I feel like rings are harder to get than boots. After that, I would kind of try to fill in the gaps. So if I really, really, really needed an attack helm, for example, to fill in my set, I might buy this. But I would probably lean towards buying the boots. Uh, me personally, I don't need any attack boots, so I'm probably skipping these for a while. Um, and I would put the chest last, absolutely, and I would probably put the weapon um, above maybe maybe the boots in my situation because I am lacking in the weapons. So overall, what I can say from these is they're okay to good pieces of gear. Some of them are great, but they're not amazing, but they are eye level 88, and they're pretty much better than anything we can get. And... With being eye level 88 and the roll ranges and luck and everything, you could have some of the best gear you'll ever get ever. So keep that in mind. Like, if you're that lucky person who gets like 29% crit damage on this ring or something like that, then you hit the jackpot, congrats. But then the other guy next door is going to have like 18% effective resistance at uh, plus 15 and wondering what he did wrong to deserve this luck. So they're one of those things you just have to gamble for and cross your fingers and hope they go well. So... Yeah, um, that's about all I wanted to talk about today. I'm not really sure what else to say about these, but I just wanted to go over each piece. In general, I can see them being used on almost any DPS, but preferably people who are focused on burns and bleeds and stuff like that. And everybody out there has um, Araminta already, so you could put this gear on her as well, although you kind of want some speed too. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe as always, and I'll talk to you later. Have a wonderful day. Bye, everybody.